This weekend, um, there's a lot happening here on this Sunday. Um, this is the, the close of the octave of Easter, so we've been <clears throat> celebrating Easter every day, and we've been doing this in the Liturgy of the Hours, as well as in the Mass, certain parts of the Mass that we've been doing every day this week. And it lasts for eight days, and today's the last day of Easter. Um, today is also the second Sunday of Easter, and today is also Divine Mercy Sunday. So um, there's a lot happening, and, and the, the readings today are also very rich, especially the gospel. And I just like to reflect upon the readings and upon Divine Mercy Sunday with you this morning. And I want to do it in kind of four simple ways. Um, the first is just acknowledging and remembering um, who, who God really is. Um, it's a good reminder today on Divine Mercy Sunday to realize that God is always merciful and he's always forgiving. Um, he is consistently willing to extend his mercy and forgiveness to us. And we give, we give thanks for that today. Um, what a great blessing it is. What a great truth it is um, that God is consistently willing to extend his mercy and forgiveness to us. Mercy is actually part of his nature. Um, it's part of who God is. And so when we sincerely ask God for mercy, um, he gives it to us um, by forgiving us. Um, this has always been true. Um, this will always be true. Um, God cannot not be merciful um, because it's who he is. And so, um, you know, that's an important thing to remember, I think. As we go throughout our lives, um, as we have our ups and downs, maybe as our children have our, their ups and downs, or grandchildren have their ups and downs, um, to, to continue to believe and trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. When we come to him in sincerity and ask for his mercy, um, he's always willing to extend it to us. And I think um, this is a, an amazing um, fact, an amazing truth about who God is. So that's number one. Um, number, number two is that um, Jesus has these teachings um, in the New Testament, especially we see it in Matthew's Gospel. In the fifth beatitude, Matthew's Gospel, um, chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And in the fifth petition of the Our Father, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, he says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And of course, he's, he's saying in the context of the disciples asking him to teach them how to pray. And when you pray, you need to ask for forgiveness for your sins. You also need to forgive those who have sinned against you. And in case we didn't hear him, um, two, two verses later, he says it again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, um, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. And I think it's true, a lot of times in our faith, we focus on the first part, um, that God is always merciful and forgiving, and which is true. But we don't always focus on the second part, that we're called to forgive and be merciful as well. And in fact, if we want to receive that mercy and forgiveness, it's a requirement um, to forgive and to be merciful. Um, I just published a book recently, um, last month, on the, the virtue of mercy and forgiveness. And if you want to learn more about how to forgive someone or how to be merciful, um, this is a wonderful book that reflects upon that. I'm really re reflecting on the, the virtue um, of mercy and forgiveness in relationship to you, um, forgiving someone else um, who has hurt you. And as it turns out, um, if you've been through a trauma, if you've been through abuse, if you've been through a situation where someone's really hurt you, um, learning to be merciful and to forgive actually is part of how you're going to be set free and how um, you're going to heal. And I reflect on that as well. And so in this um, book, The Virtue of Mercy and Forgiveness, um, Keys to Healing a Broken Heart, I give you 
a lot of practical advice on how to learn to forgive uh, more quickly, more freely, more completely, um, which really, really benefits you in the end. Um, it sets you free um, from that person and maybe what they've done, how that made you feel. Um, it sets you free from having any kind of negative attachment to them. And um, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, I'm going to be I'm selling these books afterwards, and so um, maybe you'll be able to pick one up after Mass. Um, you know, again, one of the things that we see in Matthew's Gospel is the fifth beatitude, the fifth petition. Um, the fifth beatitude is on mercy. The fifth petition is on forgiveness. And I just want to say this is not a coincidence. Um, it's not an accident. Um, actually, mercy and forgiveness are kind of... Um, each one side of the same coin. Um, so on one side is mercy, on the other side is forgiveness. And if we, if we learn to be merciful, um, we will find it much easier um, to forgive. And Jesus, you know, almost makes it a commandment when he says, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. And you could ask the question, why does he do this? And I think the answer is simple. Again, he doesn't want us to be attached in a negative way, in an unhealthy way, um, to someone else um, who has hurt us. Um, he wants us to be free. And he wants us really to be free to, to heal um, and to go forward. And he knows that if we don't forgive them, we're going to stay attached. And in fact, we're choosing to stay attached um, by not forgiving. And again, I reflect a lot on that in my book. So that's number two. Number three, um, sacramental confession. Um, we hear in our scriptures today, um, Jesus giving the apostles the power to forgive sins. And so if you are Catholic, and most of us here this morning, I'm sure, are Catholic, that means that for mortal, for grave, for serious sin to be forgiven, um, the means through which that is forgiven is the sacrament of confession and reconciliation. And so forgiveness of our serious sin comes through sacramental absolution by a priest. And it's really a gift that Jesus gave directly to the apostles. And there's a number of scriptures in the New Testament, including John chapter 20, Matthew chapter 16, chapter 18, James chapter 5 and 1 John chapter 1, um, where it's, it's really clear that Jesus is giving this power to forgive and absolve sins um, to the apostles. And, you know, in some ways, I think it's, it's actually just really sad um, that Christians of other denominations um, don't have this gift in the way that we do. And we're really, really blessed to have this sacrament, um, and we should be thankful and, you know, here at St. John Vianney Parish, um, we actually offer confession three times a week. Um, we offer it on Tuesdays um, from 10 a.m. to 12 um, p.m. We offer it on Saturdays from 3.30 to 5 p.m. And we also offer it on Fridays at the Chapel of the Holy Cross um, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And really what I'm trying to do in that, because I'm the one here in those confessions, is make this sacrament available um, to you because it's such a gift, um, such a gift that God has given us. And, and we remember that, that gift today. And finally, number four, um, we also remember St. Faustina Kalowska, um, who was a Polish nun. Um, she was born in 1905. Um, she died in 1938. Um, she's known as the Apostle of Mercy. Um, Jesus appeared to her many times, and the image is very similar to the one to my left, to your right, over here. Um, he appeared to her, and part of that was him um, helping her understand more fully um, God's mercy and how available it is. And St. Faustina taught that there's great spiritual power, and we have a unique opportunity to intercede um, by uniting ourselves um, to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And as we unite ourselves to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, 
Um, God's mercy is poured out into our lives and into the lives of those that we pray for. And so um, the words of the divine mercy prayers are very powerful. And we do have some red pamphlets in the back on the table in the back there, both in English and Spanish. And if you've never prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet, um, in many ways it's much easier than the Rosary because it only takes five or six minutes. Um, and it's really powerful prayer. You can use the same Rosary um, beads um, to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. There are a few prayers you pray, but mainly on the Our Father prayers, um, you say, you know, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. You say that on the Our Father beads. And then on the Hail Mary beads, um, you say, um, for the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and all the whole world. And, you know, it's simple, um, but it's very powerful. Um, the Divine Mercy Chaplet is especially effective um, when it's prayed at the hour of our death or at the death of a loved one. Um, it's something really, really good to do. Um, there's promises that come with that, that if you um, pray um, the Divine Mercy when someone is dying, um, that God will, will really pour out his mercy on that person. And, and so today we remember um, St. Faustina. She really was just a simple woman, um, a simple nun, um, whom God chose in a special way um, to, to be an apostle of his mercy. And part of the divine mercy prayers at the end of the, as you pray the chaplet, um, you say, Jesus, I trust in you. Um, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. And part of that is we trust um, in his mercy. We trust that, that his sacrifice on the cross um, has changed everything, that it's still available to us and um, to our families and to those around us. I want to just leave you um, with a, a couple questions this morning. Um, again, these are questions that I reflect on in this book. Um, if God is nudging your heart to learn more um, about forgiveness and mercy on this Divine Mercy Sunday, um, this would be a good way to do it, um, to... to um, to work through this book, and it is work um, because it's, it took a lot of time and effort um, writing this. Um, it's it's the an adaptation of, of my dissertation um, that I did in Rome. And the questions I want to just ask you with are, are you in a place in your life um, right now where you need mercy and forgiveness? And if you do, if you do need mercy and forgiveness right now in your life, um, then I encourage you to, um, to go to the sacrament of confession. Um, do you know someone in your family or a friend um, who needs mercy and forgiveness? Uh, maybe it's really obvious to you. Maybe it's not obvious to them. Or maybe they don't want to acknowledge it. But I would encourage you to encourage them um, to go to the sacrament of confession. Um, to just talk about it in a really positive way that they can come to that sacrament and, and be free of the burden of their sin. And then also, do you need to forgive anyone? Um, once I ask that question, do you need to forgive anyone? Um, a lot of times we know, right? I'm, uh, yes, of course, I need to forgive so-and-so, you know. Um, a lot, for a lot of us, it comes right up. Do I need to forgive someone? Yes, I do. Um, and if you do, um, then, then make that choice. I'm on this Divine Mercy Sunday um, to be merciful t towards them and, and to forgive them. And finally, do you need to ask anyone for forgiveness? Um, this might be the hardest thing to do, um, but if you need to do that, then, then humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. Um, it's a true act of, of vulnerability um, to ask someone else for forgiveness. And the thing about vulnerability is it feels like weakness for the one that's being vulnerable, um, but for the one who's receiving it, um, it feels like strength and courage because, in fact, um, that is what it is. And so, brothers and sisters, we, we thank God on this Divine Mercy Sunday, on this second Sunday of Easter, on this, at this 
end of the octave of Easter and for always being merciful with us. And we pray that we can take up Jesus' challenge um, to forgive and to be merciful to others. And we thank God for the great gift of the sacrament of confession. And we pray that we might avail ourselves of all the graces that come um, through the Divine Mercy Chaplet that came through St. Faustina. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.